Welcome to The Business Strategist, the show that gives business owners and entrepreneurs game-changing business strategies that can be used in scaling and transforming a business. Sharing deep dive conversations with industry experts, thought leaders and clients facing real challenges and uphill struggles. Brought to you by business strategist, former elite athlete, international speaker and best-selling author, Adam Strong. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Business Strategist, live here with me, Adam Strong, streaming over here on over on LinkedIn. If you have the opportunity to listen to this on the podcast, of course, we'll make sure that we put all the show description notes below so that you don't miss out on any big announcements and uh, golden gems. So today, so I wanted to ask you guys a question, right? Have you ever thought about how you can get on the radar of your potential clients? All right. So, you know, it's really hard to break through the tumbleweeds and the massive amounts of content out there. But wouldn't it be so good if you could actually get on the radar of your audience? Well, I'm going to share with you guys about how we in our business, we're going to use specific strategies that I'm going to walk you through step by step about what we do in our business and what you can do in your business too and how you can get on the radar of your potential clients. So that's what today's episode is all about. So super pumped, super excited. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to use the comments in the comment section below. Um, use the hashtag live, use the hashtag replay, of course. If you are not listening to me over on the podcast, make sure you go over onto Apple or on Spotify. And make sure you go over and follow us because there are some absolute amazing episodes on there. I wanted to kind of just jam on here and I wanted to share with you guys about some strategies that's really working in our business. And you can copy what we're doing, right? I have no problems. That's why I want to share with you. Right? So let's get into the gist of today. So you're going to need a LinkedIn profile for this. And uh, and again, if you haven't got a notebook and pen handy, I would endorse you to go and do get one right now because I'm going to give you some really great golden gems in this episode, all right? So let's go through this. Let's go through the strategies on LinkedIn specifically about how you can get on the radar of your potential clients. So what do you need to do? All right. So I'm going to quickly share with you guys some different, some different things about what you need to do. And the first thing that you need to do uh, to get onto your audience's uh, radars is now, if you've got your LinkedIn profile, actually, if you've got your LinkedIn profile and I'm what you'll need to do is you'll need to go into the in, uh, individual's profile and in the LinkedIn profile, you'll see endorsements. All right. Now, endorsements are specific skills that they specialize in, whether it be web design, consulting, strategy, whatever it might be. OK, and normally within the endorsement section, you'll have the top two or three endorsements that they want to be known for within their industry. Now, the way that you can get on the radar of your potential clients is by endorsing them for their skills, all right? And what that does is that as soon as you endorse someone's skills, they will get a notification sent to their email address saying that you've endorsed their skills, all right? Now, the great thing about that is what that does is it creates reciprocation, right? So generally what happens if we endorse someone's profile, generally what will happen is automatically the other person will acknowledge and say thank you and show appreciation. But what also does is they will tend to go to your profile and check you out. They'll check you out because again, our human beings, we have a built-in mechanism called reciprocation. We want to reciprocate. We want to say thank you. And when they go to your profile, what that does is it increases your profile views and the amount of impressions so that when you create more content out there, LinkedIn favoritizes that. All right. So that is 
tactic number one, strategy number one, endorse other people for their skills. So identify your key target market and endorse them for their skills, whatever it might be, whoever your target market is, endorse them for their skills. They'll get a notification, um, especially if they are on LinkedIn on a regular basis, uh, they will want to reciprocate. That's just the, that's just human nature, right? So that is uh, the first one more than anything else. Now, the second one I wanted to share with you guys, this is really, really uh, important, is to create. This is something that we do quite a lot in our in our business, okay? We, we create specific types of content specific to a potential client that is going to solve their pain points or problems or challenges. Let me give an example. At, at least, I don't know, we get at least between five and ten different calls every week. Okay. And each business is different, right? So each, each business have a different set of challenges, has a different set of skills. Um, no one business is the same, right? So we need to take that into consideration. There's no, no such thing as a, there's no such thing as a, an all in one package, right? It's, you have to tailor made things specific to clients, needs, wants, and aspirations, right? So, let me give an example. One of the um, uh, we a couple of weeks ago we had a I had a great call with a with a client. I'm not going to name them, but specifically they were really worried about what their competition was doing, and what I could see is that it was serving a distraction from inhibiting them from scaling up. That's what it was doing. Okay, so what I did is last week I created some content. Okay, which was a carousel, and it was even though it didn't mention them by name, it was specific and I had them in mind. Like we created content specifically for them because guess what? Other clients, other audience members are also thinking about the same thing too. All right. Just because one person is uh, experiencing a particular pain point, challenging fear or a distraction or then other people are probably experiencing that too. So we create specific types of content. We tagged them and uh, and we sent them a direct message and say, hey, we created this for you. I, th- I thought of you when I created this. Uh, let me know what your feedback is. I would appreciate it. And that's it. And again, what happens off the back of that is because they feel included, they human nature is that if you're thinking of me, I want to reciprocate or I want to engage with you further. Does that make sense? So If you are making a promise, if you're delivering on value, okay, if you're delivering on value, whatever it might be, okay, imagine the value that they would get if they actually worked with you. So you're going to create that culture of, wow, like this is amazing. Like this, you know, this business created this specifically for me. Like they, they are going to, they're going to create what we call memories. Disney's in the, in the company of creating memories, okay. And same for our business, right? We want to create memories for our clients or our potential clients, okay? So when the time is right, they can approach us and they'll be thinking at the back of their mind subconsciously, right? They're going to approach us. So that's the second thing. Create specific types of content for specific types of clientele that will help them solve their pains, problems, and challenges and give them a quick win, all right? So that's the second point. Tip number three, and this is, again, um, a really, it, this is a really good one because this is just something that we do on a daily basis, right? Every single day is we use what we call a warm outreach program on LinkedIn, okay? Now, what does that actually mean? Well, it means that it doesn't matter if we've ne- never had a conversation with someone, okay? They may, we may not have much of a connection, but the warm outreach uh LinkedIn strategy is very, very simple. I'm going to break it down for you guys so that you can really un- understand what we do in our business is really, really work and it's driving so much traffic. So the first thing is to, when you're checking out someone's profile, say it's a potential client, like, is that you want to acknowledge, so say if they're, if they're putting out content or they're making a comment on other people's uh, posts, for example, you want to acknowledge, right? You want to, there needs to be kind of resonance in what, you believe in what they're saying, okay? So for example, they may have created some content 
and they may have made a post about leadership, right? Or whatever it might be, whatever your field of expertise is. And you might say, hey, I I just wanted to acknowledge I I totally resonated with your post that you made on leadership. Uh, You know, so you're acknowledging it. Right. So you're and and people don't get enough acknowledgement, enough compliments. Right. We just don't get it. Right. But people love it. They really love it. So acknowledging. okay, really, really important. So acknowledge is the first thing. Secondly, is um, again to to compliment. Okay, so acknowledge and compliment is kind of kind of the same same thing in in a little bit. Um, But it's just it's just slightly different in, 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 in its own way. So I'm just kind of uh, just making notes, uh, just kind of make, going back to the notes that I made sure that I want to cover in this amazing episode. So acknowledge is really, really important. Okay. Um, and complimenting what they do. So that's the second part. And then the third one, which I feel like is so important is ask a question. Because again, if you're asking a question, so for example, what we tend to do especially when we're, if, if someone's posted up some content or left a comment, right, we'll acknowledge, we'll compliment them. Hey, that was a great post. Um, I've totally resonated with this post. Uh, have you, but have you considered this or have you thought, or have you thought about it from this perspective or whatever it is? You want to open up a post and what that does is other people then see what you have posted. Okay in that content. Okay. So you're acknowledging, you're complimenting and you're asking a question, right? Other people are then going to start to see that question and they'll want to engage with that question too. And guess what? They'll want to go to your profile too. Okay. That creates traffic. All right. Gets more eyeballs on your profile. All right. So that's, that's like super important. Okay. So acknowledge, compliment, and ask a question. Uh, Number, number five, be appreciated and grateful. Um, and what I mean by that is when, and this is really, really important, like LinkedIn will actually send you notifications on when it's people's birthdays, for example. When was the last time that you actually sh- shared with someone and said, happy birthday, or well done for working on your project, or well done for starting up a new project, or whatever it might be? When was the last time that you actually did that? Okay. Because again, and acknowledge and appreciate that okay so if you reach out to them again it's gonna it's gonna get them to think subconsciously of who you are you're creating a memory okay for them super super important Adaptive articles is basically AI generated articles that generated from LinkedIn that you can contribute towards okay again what that does is the great thing about collaborative articles is that you're sharing your opinions, you're sharing your feedback, you're sharing your, you're sharing your thought process, right? You're, that's what you're doing. Okay. And the goal of collaborative articles is to be insightful for people. All right. When people click on the emoji button, which is insightful, I think it's like uh, the blue background one. I can't remember, but if they click on the insightful one, what tends to happen is again, they'll go to your profile. They'll check out who you are. You know, when you leave your thought process and you leave your opinions on collaborative articles, what tends to happen again, LinkedIn loves that and LinkedIn encourages that. Um, And that's what you want. And as soon as you start to leave more opinions and, uh, thoughts with AI articles, as soon as you start to get in to a specific industry, so say, for example, you want to be known in strategy or leadership or or motivational speaking, whatever it might be, okay, the goal is to get into the top 5% within your industry, then you get your gold badge as well. So that's use collaborative articles. Number six, this is something that is not done often enough. Okay, this is just something that I believe is so underrated, but is such a simple thing. And it isn't rocket science. Okay, I just wanted to share this with you. It is not rocket science. But the the one the next thing that I'm going to share with you is to update your profile regularly. So every time you update your profile regularly, is that you can actually set up notifications that as soon as you set up that profile, it then sends a notification to everyone that is connected to you and your followers that you've updated your profile. 
And again, what does that do? It sends more eyeballs onto your profile, uh, ladies and gents. It's such a simple thing. And you might want to tweak, say, the headline or your skills, or you want to consider optimizing your profile even more, okay? So, you know, at updating your skills, for example, updating your profile color, which makes a really big difference every three to six months, updating your call to action, things like that. So updating your profile is extremely important because again, it helps to get more eyeballs on your profile. And the last one that I wanted to share with you guys is to create a LinkedIn newsletter. You know, I always I found that actually we did some testing actually over the last six months. And what we found is we did, we wrote articles on a monthly basis. Okay. And, you know, the growth was okay. It was averaging around, I don't know, maybe 10 to 15 subscribers a month. So nothing major, right? And as soon as we released an article, you'd see this big spike in impressions and the amount of uh, people that saw it. And then it would just kind of die down. Then what we did is we increased to every fortnight. So we actually released a, a newsletter called The Business Strategist every fortnight. Now what that's done is it's actually, the stats uh, is actually quite quite amazing, the stats are, all right, just from doing a fortnightly newsletter. We've actually increased, we're seeing about an average 15% increase in subscribers. We're getting roughly about between, I don't know, I would probably say around two to three subscribers a day, which is absolutely insane. But also just from our last article that we did, I think we got like 2,000 impressions. That's 2,000 potential people that are actually seeing what you're actually putting out there. So this is what we found, guys, best practices about how to get on the radar of your potential clients. And it's so important. Like there's so many people out there trying to grow their business, scale their business, right? You know, if you're a business that is doing under seven figures, your focus should be sales and leads end of story and nothing else matters, right? But this is just going to help you give that competitive edge and how to get, again, how to kind of stand out from the crowd, you know, especially and looking at kind of other people in your industry, like what are they doing? Okay. But if you want to get more eyeballs on your business on what you, um, you know, you want to increase your sales, you want to increase your leads, I can guarantee you just from doing these seven strategies that we do in our business, honestly, we don't have a lead generation problem and nor will you. Okay. So for those guys that are tearing their hair right now thinking I've got to create more content or I've got to create multiple types of content, you know, I've got to work so hard. Do these seven strategies. Okay. Do them religiously spend 30 to 60 minutes a day on these strategies, and I can guarantee you within the within the first 30 days, you will get results. I'll guarantee you that. Try it yourself. Come back to me, provide me with some feedback, and let me know if it works for you because it darn sure works for us. Anyway, before I give you a quick summary, if you guys that are listening in on LinkedIn, of course, make sure that you, uh, if you have any questions, make sure that you put any questions uh, down below as well. Great to see Celia on here. It's great to see MD as well. So thank you so much for your kind comments, of course. I hope that these tips and, and tactics have been really, really useful. So let's summarize, guys. Let's summarize about how you can get on the radar of your potential clients. So first of all, endorse your potential audience, endorse them for their skills. So go into their profile, look at their top three skills that they would want to be known for in their industry and endorse them. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, create specific types of content for a client that you may have had a past call with or that you've had an interaction with or an engagement with. Okay, you're creating content to help them to get a quick win. All right. So whatever that might be, okay, uh, whatever your industry is, like, for example, if you're an accountant, okay, and it's coming to the end of tax year, like what are, what type of content could you create to the help business owners, for example, to get ahead of getting their tax returns in on time, for example, like what type of content could you create? Or they might be worried about being compliant, or they might be worried about 
intellectual property, whatever it might be, create content specific to that audience. Tip number three is use the three steps. That's in the warm LinkedIn outreach strategy. So compliment and ask a question. Tip number four, be appreciated and grateful. Okay. So send out, if you get notifications on LinkedIn, say it's my birthday or anyone's birthday of your potential audience. Okay. Congratulate them. Tell them that they, hopefully they're going to have a great day. Wish them a great day. And again, it helps them to, it It just kind of gets more, you want to reciprocate. You just, you can't help yourself. Uh, when people send me, um, birthday messages i always like to acknowledge and 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 say thank you back it's just kind of human nature right strategy number five use collaborative articles if you're not sure about how to use collaborative articles go into google or go into linkedin actually type in collaborative articles how to contribute towards that again you get more recognition in your industry so if you want to be known for leadership then go then contribute to leadership articles if you want to be known for motivational speaking then focus on that okay so that's tip number five tip number six update your profile okay it amazes me how many profiles that don't get updated they go for years and years and years they don't change the profile picture they don't change the headline banner they don't change the headline or the hook Uh, they don't change the about us section for years for absolutely years so it's important to make sure that you do that and um so that was uh that was that tip and the last one, share and, share and tag, create a LinkedIn newsletter. All right. And, you know, try and test that because I think it's just going to be, it's just going to be, it's, it's really, really good. You know, try to aim for start up maybe once a month, increase to every fortnight, of course, and, uh, and then go from there. So listen, hope that this, these tips have been exceptionally great for you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to use the LinkedIn comment section below. If you're listening to this on the podcast, reach out to me. Hello at adamstrong.net. Hello at adamstrong.net. Anyway, hope that you've had a great, uh, hope you've been listening in and uh, thanks so much. Take care and we'll see you soon. Cheers. Thanks for listening to The Business Strategist with Adam Strong. Follow Adam on LinkedIn, YouTube and adamstrong.net. Leave a review on Apple or Spotify.